In colonial Westfield, New Jersey, there's the Miller Corey House. It's a private residence that was converted into a museum. On the other side of town, there's a house that is not as well known. You've probably passed by it a thousand times. It's the Pearson Clark home at the end of East Broad. And just like the Miller Corey House, it is rich in history. Its future, however, remains uncertain. The home is named after two prominent families in Westfield, the Pearsons and the Clarks. Daniel Pearson bought the property in 1752, 149 acres of it. The Pearson farm stretched all the way from Woodland Avenue to Springfield Avenue along East Broad Street. He grew mostly wheat and corn. He had eight head of cattle, four hogs, four horses, a wife, and seven children. Now the first thing you notice about the place is that the road is crooked. Why is the road crooked? Simple. Horses. A curved road makes it easier for the horses to get up the hill. And when you finally get there, you notice that the house itself is kind of crooked. It's not facing the road directly. Instead, it faces magnetic north. You get the sun all day at the front of the house. Daniel Pearson bought the property on the edge of the Minnesink Trail. It's a trail that the Native Americans used to hunt and to fish. Artifacts dating back to 500 BCE have been found along these Native American trails. In nearby Lenape Park, they even found a mastodon. Native Americans would camp all along the trail, and yes, they even buried their dead along the trail as well. Now, besides the house, Daniel Pearson had a number of other structures on the property. One of them was the Union Schoolhouse. According to historian Charles Philhauer, it was the first school in Westfield Township. It was a private school that had about 45 students. We don't know if Daniel Pearson owned the school or simply leased it to someone else. If he was the headmaster of the school, it means that Daniel Pearson was Westfield's first school teacher. In the middle of the town is the First Presbyterian Church of Westfield, a church that was founded by the people who lived in the house we're talking about. When you look at the list of the founding fathers, you'll find William Clark and Daniel and David Pearson. Now in 1776, we started making the transition from a colony to a country. During that time, Westfield was raided by the British many times over. One of those raids occurred on the Pearson property. Now we know this because the British kept great records. A list of depredations shows that Daniel Pearson had to give up goods in the amount of 48 British pounds sterling. By the way, if this picture looks a little bit familiar, that's because it's in the middle of the town hall in Westfield. 1777, Daniel Pearson joins the Continental Army. He is a second lieutenant. He serves under Lord Sterling, William Alexander. He's under the direct command of Colonel Elias Dayton. The paymaster of the group will later have a high school named after him. It is Jonathan Dayton. In June of 1777, the British attack Westfield under the auspices of General Howe and Lord Cornwallis. It is known as the Battle of the Short Hills, and they get as far as the First Presbyterian Church. They loot the town, they even burn the Bibles. But they meet with such resistance by people such as Daniel Pearson that they wisely decide to retreat the next day. Daniel Pearson will go on to fight in the Battle of Brandywine and the Battle of Germantown. He spends the winter of 1777 and 78 with George Washington at Valley Forge. He fights at the Battle of Monmouth with Lord Sterling, whose regiment was given high marks by Washington's aide-de-camp, Alexander Hamilton. Towards the end of the Revolution, he retires to his farm. He becomes active in the Baptist Church in Scotch Plains. There, in the churchyard, is his final resting place. It's marked by a tombstone that has fallen over and in great disrepair. It's a place that is little known and sadly, very rarely visited.
1839, the house was bought by Andrew Hetfield Clark. Clark, of course, was a very imposing figure, but also had a lovely singing voice. He, too, was a teacher at the Union Schoolhouse. Later, when the schools became public, he was Westfield's superintendent of schools. Now, here's a picture of the house that may date back to the 1830s. Seated on the porch is an old man with a white beard. It's entirely possible that this man is Captain William Clark. Captain Billy, as he was known. Captain Billy is a big part of Westfield folklore. He's the one who helped recapture a cannon called Old One Horn from the British. That cannon, by the way, can be found up at Fairview Cemetery. Eventually, Captain Billy was captured by the British, and he was sent to the Sugar House Prison in New York. Now, very few people actually survived the prison. Captain Billy, however, was the exception. He not only survived, he kept a souvenir of the prison, and even fashioned a cane out of it that he kept for the rest of his life. In any case, he passed away in the home, leaving behind a very rich legacy. D.W. Griffith. He was a maverick of a filmmaker. In 1909, he was working out of the Biograph Company in New York. And for locations, he would run out to Fort Lee and, yes, Westfield, New Jersey. Here's a film he made called An Arcadian Maid. It was filmed in Westfield. That is Elm Street. The building in the background is the Old Baptist Church. Today, it's across from Trader Joe's. There's a young woman who gets off the trolley. She would later become the most famous actress in the world. Her name? Mary Pickford. Griffith would film The Birth of a Nation and Intolerance. Mary Pickford would go on to found United Artists. But before they became superstars, they would film in the area behind the Pearson Farm. Here's Mary Pickford walking down a dirt road in a film called A Country Cupid. We know that there was a dirt road behind the Pearson Farm. And this very well might be the house itself. The shape of the house, the roof, the chimney, even the angle of the sun are all correct. Here's another film called The Adventures of Billy. This might be the back of the Pearson home. And this might be the front of the home. Notice the fence. It is the same type of fence that the house has. It's also at that weird angle we talked about. That road in the background is probably East Broad. Westfield celebrates its 200th anniversary. And on the program, the Pearson Clark home is featured prominently. You'll also find the Pearson Clark home in history books all throughout the library. In 1973, Westfield Leader says that it is a landmark. It appears on tours, historic tours of the town. 1976, it is featured for the bicentennial. It even appears on road maps of the day. That's right, go up, make a left where Captain Billy used to live. Back in the middle of town, there's a monument. At the top of the monument is a statue of a woman. It is Cleo, the Greek muse of history. She is a silent witness to everything that's happened in the past. As for the future, we look to Mary Pickford. The past cannot be changed. The future is yet in your power. We ask ourselves, how will we use that power? What actions will we take? Back at the monument, Cleo awaits our answer. From her vantage, she can see the home. By her measure, she will judge our actions. <laughs> <laughs>